So do y'all, would y'all like to play I Spy? So we put up this fence, right? Because Bobby Joe can't jump the fence. So I spy something black and white. Do you spy something something black and white? Bobby Joe, would you like to tell us how you got over there? Huh? How did you get over there? Bobby Joe is something else. I cannot believe that he can hurdle that fence. I mean, it is pretty high, but you know him. If there's a wheel or a way to get out of the fence, he's gonna do it. You know, out of all the animals, I have to say that the goats are the most challenging. Chickens are hard to raise, but goats try to find every way to climb a fence to get out, and none of the other animals are quite like that. Yesterday was a big day. I had so much going on. I had a tour of about 18 people and my sheep have been so hot and I just had them sheared roughly about two months ago, but I decided to go ahead and break down and have them sheared again because in Alabama, it is like scorching hot and humid and I wanted them to be as comfortable as possible. So today, both sheep got sheared and both alpacas got sheared. Hold them still so he doesn't, he probably won't. So you look pretty calm. If you look at the video, it seems so inhumane to tie them down, but it is impossible to shear an alpaca without holding them down. They just don't like it, but this is a situation where it's like as a as a mom, it's the best thing for them because they get so overheated and I had to make the decision to have them sheared. Normally, people have them sheared just twice a year, maybe even once a year because they raise the alpacas for the fiber. And they, in order to um, spin the fiber, it has to be three inches long. So most people let the fiber get really long before the, they shear them, but that's not the case with me. This is my side squeeze. So I do not um, keep the fiber. I did in the beginning and I actually had a alpaca blanket made out of Rio and Georgia Lee's wool. But that blanket cost me nearly $400 and it's a single person blanket because the wool, once it's, you have to pay to have it sheared, then you have to have pay to have it clean, then you have to have it paid, you have to pay to have it spun into yarn, and then you have to have um, it crocheted. So it ends up being very expensive. So I found that that was not an avenue that I wanted to go towards. The most important thing for my alpacas is to be comfortable in this heat. So I decided to go ahead and have them sheared for the second time this year because it's for their own safety and um, they just feel better instead of having all that wool on them. I told you guys that Georgia Lee came from a bad situation in my, in my opinion. And right now she is struggling really big because she has this on and I'm taking her to get a haircut and she's scared to death. She is absolutely scared to death. So I'm trying to give her comfort to let her know that I'm right here with her and everything's gonna be okay. So alpacas do not breathe out of their mouth. So 
so when I fight her to walk, sometimes she struggles breathing because this comes too far down on her nose because she's fighting me. And so we have to stop oh. every few minutes and give her a break because she needs to be able to breathe. It's tough on her. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come with me. It's okay. Come on, come on, come on. So I stop her every few minutes and comfort her. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Mama, shh. Mama loves you. It's okay. It's okay. If you don't know Shishi, Shishi is my female pig. Freddie is my black potbelly pig, and boyfriend is my cooney coon male pig. And they have all been together for two and a half years, and Shishi has never gotten pregnant. Freddie has been castrated, so boyfriend is just not getting the job done. So I'm out here with this pig. Okay, roll over. Let him see your belly. Come on. Roll over. Come on. Come on. There you go. Look at this big old belly. Y'all think we got babies? Shishi? Shishi, you got babies in that belly? <laughs> All right. There she is. I'm thinking. Shishi, you got some babies in your tummy. I don't know. I might be wrong. But I see some growth and hanging. So, and she hasn't been going in heat. So that's the indication. We'll see. I had the vet come out here and I was like, why is she, she not having babies? Like what is going on? So he began to tell me that he thought they were too fat. That was not fun to hear. Also, when I went to Ohio to Kambach Feed, I was able to have a long conversation with their nutritionist um, that handles sows. So, um, they also told me that my pigs were too fat. So I had to put them on a diet. They started their diet in April and boyfriend has lost a ton of weight. He looks fantastic. Shishi, on the other hand, is huge. Over the past month and a half, I've noticed that Shishi has not gone, look at these, look at these cats. I noticed that Shishi has not gone in heat. And I'm like, what's that all about? Does that mean she's pregnant? So we will see. Um, I called the vet about having an ultrasound to see if she is pregnant. And they're supposed to call me back Monday. And, um, you know, I don't really want to breed pigs all the time, but I do want to learn and I do want to experience she she being pregnant and having piglets because that's something that I've never experienced. Part of having a farm is learning. Like you have to learn. And if she she is pregnant and if she has piglets, the next step is to get boyfriend castrated. Hey, 
A little information about pigs so I can educate you. Is pigs gestation period, it is so strange. It is three months, three weeks, and three days. Now, isn't that strange that a pig's gestation is that long? Like, it's just kind of weird. But, so in other words, if I don't, if she, she was able to get pregnant, I can't have she, she and boyfriend together all the time because we would have piglets, what, three, four times a year? And I can't do that. So I will have to get boyfriend castrated once she has one set of piglets because my goal is for them to live together. I don't enjoy separating them. I just, and they've always been together. And so I would hate to have to put boyfriend in a side pen all by himself or she, she in the side pen all by herself. I just don't, that just doesn't sound appealing to me. So we have a lot coming up and, and a lot of decisions to make. <laughs> Today, we have a rental for our farm. We have a baby shower and this is our second baby shower on our farm and never did I imagine people wanting to do a baby shower here but it's been so exciting and Gar's up there in his shop making doors you see those white garage doors right there he's gonna turn those doors into the same doors that he has on this shop right here so it all kind of coordinates but this is going to be my education center. So we're working really hard on trying to get that up and running in the next year. One thing that's very special on Wednesdays is I've had a group home come to my farm every single Wednesday for the past year and a half. And what they do is they volunteer. And I've talked to you guys about this before, but it is so special to me. And I preach all the time about making a difference and not sitting on the couch and getting up and dance and making difference in people's lives. But every Wednesday, I get blessed. And this is why. What do you think about Fluffy May? Justin? I think Fluffy is adorable. Is it? Is she adorable? What's she feel like? She's soft. She's soft. What else? Fluffy. What color do you think she is? What do you think? What color do you think she is? She is blue. Ah, now, how do you know that? You are a smart man. Oh, man. You are, yeah. you are a man. Looking good to my grandma. To your grandma's? Yeah. Yes. Grandma is going to be happy. You going to tell her that you held Fluffy May? Yeah. <laughs> I think Fluffy May loves you. Yeah. But you know who I think loves you the more? Me. I love you more. <laughs> yeah. What you making? Uh, making a stand, put my barrel on. What barrel are you talking about? My oil drum over there, my 30-gallon drum, uh, making a little holder where I can roll it around the shop and change oil into vehicles and tractors. I guess he's not making my doors right here. <laughs> he's He bought oil, a big gallon uh, drum of oil, 
to change all the tractors um, oil and stuff and so he needed to be able to roll it around as he changed the tractors oil and so forth so that's what he's making so we'll check back in with him in a minute and see what it looks like so you know shane there was this little girl that used to be in my neighborhood and her name was charlotte johnson and you know what yeah. everybody thought she was looking good so i went to call her on the telephone and i walked over to her house shane and guess what was going on what her brother was eating so eating on the sofa and he was eating chocolate pie huh. yeah her daddy was in the kitchen rolling chicken up to fry i couldn't believe it but you know what charlotte johnson was doing she was on the front porch and you know what she did she was just a swinging you know what Boy. i think i had more fun at the baby shower than they did probably so it was really fun they, How hindered, they hindered me from working though i had to, had to take about a two hour break well you needed to yeah i always need to take a break I ain't enough breaks in a day. So okay. this little contraption that I have built, uh, it is uh, to hold a 30-gallon drum of oil because I have to order oil by the gallons because I have so much BS uh, that I have to change the oil in. So we're fixing to look at it. I made it this morning, uh, finished it up since the baby shower's here, got it painted, put one barrel of oil in it. We're fixing to check it out. All right. So I'm, ass I'm assuming the oil comes out of this little thing right out here. Out of the spigot. Out of the spigot. And so you can sh show me, you can roll that around? Yeah. So it's moving. Is it heavy? Uh, yeah, it's, got, it's, it's loaded with oil. But it moves pretty smoothly. Oh, yeah, it moves easy. It moves easy. Stand it up on the end, strap it, tilt it over, voila. Well, it looks good. Turned out good. How long did it take you to build this? About two hours. I, I was off and on about it, two hours, two look, and a half hours. It looks good. At the baby shower today, I came in the coop to get some feed for them to feed the chickens. And guess what I found? days ago I did a video that went viral and it was uh, Shane Garth uh, brushing Dexter and people Shane was brushing him outside the fence and there were a lot of comments and they were saying I dare you to go inside the fence and brush him and Shane and I just chuckled Dexter must be one of a kind. <laughs> um, he is an intact bull and he is handled every single day in this petting zoo. Like I am out here 24 seven. Like I am only in my house for like maybe just like to take dogs out, go in and out, eat lunch. But I am out here with these animals all the time. So there's a big difference in a petting zoo bull and a bull that's just in the pasture, just roaming around. There's a big, huge difference. So stay tuned to see if Shishi is pregnant for the first time. And um, I thank you for subscribing to my page. And I thank you for following us and sharing and like 
and I hope that we continue to bring great content for you to continue to watch. I'll see you next time. And don't forget, September the 9th is the YouTube meet and greet at Petals for the Past. I hope to see you there.